Coming up on episode number 155 of the Knife Junkie podcast, we're covering stories in Knife Life News. Bob's got a new article in Knives Illustrated, as well as some new old knives and a tip of the week. Welcome to the Knife Junkie podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your hosts, Jim Person and Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Well, hello, Knife Junkie, and welcome to episode number 155 of the Knife Junkie podcast. I'm Jim Person. And I'm Bob DeMarco. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the Knife Junkie podcast, the place for knife newbies and knife junkies to learn everything about uh, knives and knife collecting, get to uh, hear from uh, knife makers, knife manufacturers, knife reviewers, anybody that uh, loves knives. And uh, on the midweek supplemental episode of the show, that's when we get to dive deep into some of the stories in Knife Life News and some of the other things that uh, Bob wants to talk about kind of teased some of the things coming up uh, this week's show, episode number 155. Bob, a lot to cover. Hopefully this week will not be another hour like we did last week. No, no, we're going to be brisk on all of these. I don't have much to say about any of them, but it all needs to be said. Okay. So. <laughs> all right, all right. So uh, first of all, uh, I think you uncovered a, a, a new site, or at least new to you. Yeah, new to me, and uh, you know, maybe maybe I'm just late to the party. But I was looking around uh, for some Great Eastern cutlery knives because uh, I, I wanted to get my brother a birthday present, and uh, I always get him modern tactical folders. And I know that that's what he wants and that's what he likes. But some of the best gifts he's ever given me are things that I didn't necessarily want, like my first Leatherman. I was like, oh, that's cool. I wish it was just a blade. But uh, ends up, you know, 25 years later, I still have and use that Leatherman. And uh, so I figured this would be the same thing uh, with my brother. So just looking around, um, it's really hard to find Great Eastern Cutlery Knives new right now. Uh, you know, they came out with the, uh, with the beer and sausage, and that was gone immediately. I couldn't get my hands on them, even, even though I knew they were coming. Um, so looking for Vic, it was a, it was a problem. And then uh, I found this place, the knife connection, and they have a number of GECs in stock. And actually they tell you how many they have in stock per model, which is great. So I, I ended up getting my brother, Vic, if you're watching, turn this off because you're not going to get it yet. Uh, but I ended up getting him a number 83 oil field jack in, um, tortoise shell. My brother loves tortoise shell. Uh, I just bought a new base. Well, and his old base, uh, my new base from him, it's got a tortoise shell pickup, uh, pick guard. He's always loved that material. He actually uh, got me to love that material. So I'm getting him that knife. Anyway, knife connection, they have GECs in stock. Definitely check them out. All right. Cool resource to, uh, to learn about. There's always uh, something uh, new and Exciting. We're uncovering here. Uh, and, you know, if you have uh, already been familiar with it, uh, our apologies. I'm sure there are other folks uh, out there that uh, are not. So that's what we try to do. Uh, uh, bring uh, new resources, new information, old information, old resources, that kind of thing. Bring it to light. Talk about it and expose uh, more knife newbies like myself to uh, help them become knife junkies like you. So uh, speaking of uh, knives and knives illustrated, something that we uh, talk about from time to time, Bob, you, uh, mm -hmm. of course, uh, good friends with uh, Slicey Dicey, Brian Ball, the, uh, the editor of Knives Illustrated, have also uh, started to become a writer for Knives Illustrated. And you had uh, quite a surprise, I guess, a pleasant surprise when you went to a retail store. So I'll let you tell about it. Yeah, it was uh, the first time I've been in a bookstore since, you know, before March, I suppose. So it's been uh, the better part of a year. And it was nice. It was Barnes & Noble. There was no one in it. I had the run of the store uh, just ambling around. I decided to go to the magazine section, see if they have any knife magazines. It was it was totally innocent. Uh, I pull up, a, I pull up, I pull this up. I see a uh, uh, an Iron Dragon by Emerson. I'm like, oh, that's cool. I wonder why they have an Emerson Iron Dragon on the cover of Knives Illustrated. I'm like, oh, that's my article. So uh, I bought three of them because that's how many they had because, you know, they can't keep those on the shelves, uh, especially when I'm writing the cover article about Emerson's. So obviously I had to pick up the last three. And of course, that's a joke. That's me being uh, 
high handed. Uh, but uh, I was thrilled. I have to say, I was thrilled to see it. And man, Brian Slicey Dicey is doing an amazing job. I mean, that uh, as the new editor of Knives Mag uh, Knives Illustrated, because uh, it just looks beautiful uh, through and through. It's got a number of really great articles in it. Uh, there's one by uh, Nick Shabazz in there. There's uh, there are a number of other really great. Uh, articles beautifully illustrated with photographs and man, great magazine. So check it out for sure. You know, here, why don't you check it out right now? <laughs> uh, right here. Um, so yeah. Sorry, Bob. <laughs> I was having trouble with the technology. It's <laughs> quite all right. Kudos to the man. Uh, so uh, leave, leave you hanging out there for a while. <laughs> I wasn't sure if my, my camera froze. Um, well, actually, we're having uh, just, you know, to give the uh, listeners and viewers uh, a little insight. It looks like our uh, we are struggling with some Internet connectivity right now. There's some uh, some lags and freezing up. So hopefully uh, folks won't notice that too bad. But uh, apologize there for that. Uh, again, the uh, uh, knives illustrated dot com. That's where you can uh, find uh, Bob's article. And of course, if you want to go uh, to your favorite bookstore, uh, they will have the physical copy there. Or if you would like to uh, get a subscription, I'm sure the folks at Knives Illustrated would love for you to subscribe. Uh, last Thursday night, Bob, I think you mentioned it briefly on Thursday Night Knives mm -hmm. as, as the conversation was going, uh, a challenge to use a small knife. You want to kind of give me a little more details about that? Yeah, one of my favorite YouTubers, um, and he's from Ireland, his name is Paddy's Potato Peelers, Paddy from Across the Shock, how he introduces himself. Uh, he has a love of small knives. He loves slip joint knives, and uh, his videos are uh, adoring. I mean, he really adores these little knives, and he gets you excited about them. And so this past week, he was doing a, he was doing a video on the peanut, which is a traditional pattern. It's a jackknife, small jackknife with a pen blade and a clip point blade. And he had received one from Heine Haynes, a, a, a European uh, knife distributor uh, over there. And uh, he was just talking about how much he loves the peanut and how he was gonna use that exclusively all week. And he, he challenged everyone watching to do the same thing. So uh, I have this peanut, it's in purple uh, cor Corian. And so I used that and I used this. And actually I posted a, uh, a picture on uh, Instagram of me, uh, of the bagel I cut with this. And let me tell you, this is uh, the GEC number six Pemberton. It's a very small knife and it could not get to the core of that bagel uh, to, you know, all the way through. So, uh, so, which means it was a good bagel too, nice and fluffy. So I had to open it up and, and dig in there, but you can do what, whatever you really need to do pretty much with something like this, unless you're, yeah. unless you're working with your knives, you know, that's a different right. Uh, that, uh, I think it was the purple knife. What'd you say that, uh, material was? Corian. Oh, let's see. It says right on here. Purple passion Corallon. Let me see. Okay. So my, and you know, I'll probably, I'll, you know, I'll probably ask Cor you what that is. If you know. <laughs> Corallon, it's like Delrin, you know, it's just a synthetic material. Uh, okay. but it's, uh, it's swirly and purple and I like it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, uh, the, the uh, small knife challenges, it was fun. So. All right. Uh, well, I, I like that uh, knife too. And I may have to uh, talk to you about uh, where to get one and how much that is because my son is a huge Prince fan. And of oh. course the color purple, he would, he would love that. Uh, uh, he's the uh, first year in college now and he uh, has been known to uh, take one of my knives from time to time when he was working at the grocery <laughs> store and that kind of thing. So, you know, maybe it's time for uh, me to buy him his first knife. Well, I don't know if that would be a good one or not. Yeah, it might be, but there are a lot of other great purple knives out there. You can uh, talk to Brian about that too. That's his favorite color. He's got a lot of purple. Oh, knives, okay. So. Well, I think Brian's uh, price range is a little higher than mine, <laughs> yeah, <probably. laughs> especially for a knife for the kid. But anyway, all right. Uh, still to uh, come, we've got another tip of the week from the Knife Junkie, as well as some new old knives that uh, has a family connection. But coming up next, it's Knife Life News. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. All right, Robert, Mr. Knife Junkie. Uh, we've got uh, several stories in Knife Life News to uh, talk about. And I think we're going to start with a story involving Benchmade. 
Uh, yep, just a just a quick update because uh, we talked about this when uh, Les Deasis passed away. Uh, may he rest in peace. Uh, that his son John would be moving into the position of president and CEO, and it is now official uh, after an interim period uh, where um, uh, Les Deasis is. Uh, wife Roberta and I suppose John's mother uh, took took over that role but now uh, John is in place and he will be uh, steering the ship uh, so yeah I mean he's been around uh, that company the the entire time and uh, you know had the tutelage of his father so uh, it should uh, it should be great <laughs> I mean I'm just I just wanted to mention this news it, it is official and uh, right and everyone has full faith in him so yeah, not a whole lot to say other than, you know, what's happening and that kind of thing. Yeah. So not sure cool if, that uh, it's staying in the family. Yeah, yeah. Not sure uh, what, if any changes uh, that means for the future. But I guess the uh, the future will uh, let us know after uh, after we see if uh, things continue or if there are little tweaks and changes, that kind of thing along the way. It will indeed. All right. Uh, beloved K-Bar, you want to talk about the K-Bar, something going on there. <laughs> Yeah, uh, actually, the K-Bar Dozier Folding Hunter, which is, uh, uh, it's been around for 20 years. It is a lightweight uh, FRN, so that's fiberglass reinforced nylon handled, uh, unlined handle, so it's very light, uh, OS 8 uh, drop point blade. It's been hugely famous over the years because it's very inexpensive and very, very capable. A Folding Hunter in uh, general is a single-bladed folding knife. Uh, with a with a lock generally, uh, unless you're talking about the uh, the slip joint versions, and uh, so this is just knife folding knife. It's kind of as generic as it gets, but it's got a lot of character in the different colored handles and uh, and the different treatments it's gotten over the years. Actually, I have a, sm a mini version of that which I should have pulled out for this, but it's in a little survival pack that I keep in my backpack, and uh, it's just there all the time uh, and. Uh, and just pop it out and use it uh, if need be. It's one of those kind of knives. It'd be great to have a few of them and stash them around. Anyway, uh, this is a, uh, as I mentioned, a beloved knife, and it just got an upgrade to D2 steel, which is kind of the premium budget steel. I don't know. I don't know. That's kind of where, <laughs> where budget knives have been the past uh, year and a half is, oh, okay. is uh, kind of capping out at D2. And, uh, you know, it's a great semi-stainless um, uh, carbon steel, right? Semi-stainless steel, uh, high carbon. Oh, geez, now I'm embarrassed uh, talking about it, but <laughs> it will stain. I can get uh, I can get it very very sharp. It is a uh, it is a tool steel and it's semi-stainless. Um, anyway, so All right, let, me, it, it is, let, me, let me jump in and save you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> yeah, so it is an upgrade. Check it out. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Next up, uh, a brand that uh, you love to talk about. And most of the time it's um, kind of tongue in cheek, I guess, if you will. But uh, the James brand. Yeah, I, I, I don't you know, I call it a hipster brand. I dish on it. I think it's only because I'm intimidated by their sense of style. Um, but they keep coming out with cool knives. And so we keep talking about them here. And uh, the latest one is called the Pike, and it's a slip joint, and it's got a beautiful Warncliffe blade, uh, similar to this, uh, this style blade. And uh, it just has major style, and it's uh, 2.3 inches, so it's, a, it's shorter than the knife it's replacing in the lineup, which is the County, uh, which was more of a sodbuster style, uh, bullnose style blade. So this is definitely a little gents carry. Uh, uh, to me, the Warncliffe is the perfect blade for a small, uh, for a small little knife like this that you're going to carry in your pocket. Because if you need to discreetly tear out something out of out of a book or out of a newspaper, um, you've got it right there. Excuse me, and uh, you can do so much with that blade shape, and you get so much cutting edge uh, right there at the at the fore. So. This, uh, I don't know, this Pike might be my first James Brand knife. And uh, as you see that example, it's got a steel frame, but with massive inlays, or maybe that's an overlay. Right there, you're looking at micarta. I think they also have uh, a, a wood that it will come with. Uh, but just a beautiful, beautiful little knife. What do you think? Well... Oh, you know, maybe I'll do like you did just a moment ago. Moving on, because, <laughs> because you know, I'm looking at this going, okay, that 
that's not really much there that I see from the picture. And, you know, apologies to the picture. It doesn't look like all that much to me. Well, I think maybe that's the point. It's a, it is definitely a minimalist sort of design. And I think that's what kind of uh, has me about it. And, and it's got the massive inlay slash overlay thing. And right now that's very appealing to me. You know, that's what drew me to that uh, uh, Mark one by, by uh, Douglas Esposito, that full, that full uh, handle inlay, just, I don't All know, right. something about it knocks me out. And uh, you know, like I mentioned, that blade is perfect for the, uh, purpose. Drop it in your right. pocket okay. or your slacks so, pocket. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, maybe I'm learning a little bit about my taste. You know, I like, um, I think I like minimalist, but with a flair, maybe, I, you know, maybe a little color or a little mm -hmm. jig bone or a little something like that, as opposed to when I'm looking at this knife, I'm looking off on my other screen here. To me, it just looks like a black wood handle plain Jane knife, you know, <laughs> so hmm. it doesn't, that doesn't, doesn't do it for me, but, but yet I'm not way up on the other side of scales where I need a lot of fancy type stuff. I mean, if that makes sense. So I'm, no, I'm no, a little, no, I, yeah, I, don't I understand. Know. I mean, it, it, it has to do with the, uh, the, uh, that minimalist, uh, you know, like this is the Medford gentleman, Jack one, it's got a very minimalist, feel to it. I could see this and that going together. Um, but I, but I, 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 but get I, like, you, I get what you mean. I like the Medford better. Oh yeah. I mean, maybe it's just because it's got silver or a little, little bit of color or, or something. I mean, and maybe this picture just doesn't do the, the James brand knife justice. Yeah. Perhaps. That, yeah. 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 Maybe not. Or, or, or like you said, maybe it's just a matter of personal taste and style. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, definitely what we would like to do, and I know you've mentioned it before, is get somebody on from the James brand to talk yeah, yeah. about their knives. Maybe they can uh, show off this one and some of the others that, uh, you know, maybe have some better pictures or that kind of type of thing. And uh, I know you would like to learn more about James brand, and I would too, now that I've uh, heard us talking about it from time to time. So uh, James brand, if you're listening, email yep, Bob yeah. at bob at the yeah. knife .com and let us know. And yeah, uh, check you your inbox. <laughs> you already yeah. have my... <laughs> If you have any uh, experience with uh, James Brand, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Call the listener line at 724-466-4487. That's 724-466-4487. Finally, in Knife Life News, Bob, uh, Dirk Pinkerton back in the news, something you want to talk about. Yeah, I just have to mention before we move on uh, that that the Pike is 12C27N, so it's a Sandvik Swedish steel, not, not, not anything to write home about, but, uh, you know, definitely a decent serviceable steel. Uh, yeah. So Dirk Pinkerton has another knife out. He, he's been red hot, uh, in the production world. Uh, he has one out with artisan. He has one out with, uh, uh you know, current one out with Kaiser. He's got, uh, with artisan, he's got those big, uh, what were the proponent? What, what's it called? Uh, those big giant worn cliffs. And, uh, so, you know, his, his, uh, his, his style is very, um, Hmm. EDC slash tactical friendly. He has a lot of these worn cliffs, these aggressive worn cliffs. And his latest is with concept or concept. I'm pretty sure it's just concept, uh, which is a, a brand that has been started by someone who used to be uh, a pivotal player over at Kaiser knives. And they've just been tearing it up with their, with their own in-house designs. And also um, they're reaching out to designers and getting some, some outside designer designs like this one, uh, the very small uh, Main Street. Now, this is like another little knife you can drop in your pocket. That's a 2.3 uh, inch, I believe, blade. And uh, you know you know how I feel about the Warncliffe, super useful, but this one is pretty aggressive. You could use it, uh, you could use it to fend off, uh, you know, tyrants and, and uh, rapscallions if need be. Uh, but it's about the size of the shard. Uh, three inches in length. That's what it is. Three inches. Sorry about that. Uh, G10 uh, carbon fiber. And uh, I don't know, I, you know, it's up my alley. I got to say, um, I could definitely identify that as a Pinkerton knife. You look at that and, and uh, his designs definitely, uh, his knives are all in the same language. Okay. All right. Well, that's, um, I guess either good or bad. I, that was the first words that came to my mind. I guess it's good that you can um, 
notice a, a, a brand or a maker's style with every knife. But then my the reason I said it's it's could be bad is, you know, if there are folks that, you know, maybe don't are not huge fans of your style or super fans of your style. Maybe if you did another style that was not recognizable, you mm -hmm. know, you'd, you'd have a bigger market. You'd have more fans that maybe would like this knife that you made and not that knife. I, I'm, yeah, I'm well, kind of the rambling one now. Does that make sense? Well, <laughs> yeah, it does. It does make sense. And I, I understand what you're getting at. And it could be that uh, designers like Pinkerton who um, make one design, like uh, he made one, say say he makes a uh, uh, the shard for Kaiser, or he makes uh, some sort of Warncliffe. It's a success for that company. Then Artisan comes along and says, well, we want a Warncliffe because you've had success with the Warncliffe. You obviously design mm -hmm. these really cool Warncliffs. Let's have one of yours. And then the right. other company, come, Concept, comes along and says, uh, we want a Warncliffe from you too. Right. And now suddenly Dirk Pinkerton is, is uh, you know, pigeonholed as the Warncliffe guy. Uh, mm -hmm. When in reality, I mean, you look at... Uh, you look at his designs, he has some others like the Nomad, which is a, an upswept, it's his favorite design. It's an upswept, uh, um, what do you call it? Like um, um, scimitar, um, you know what I'm talking about, the upswept uh, Persian kind of blade. Uh, so okay. that's, his, that's his favorite. And, and he's got one of those, whereas he's got a million of these, uh, not a million, but he's got many right. Warncliffs out there. So the fact that he's got a deep bench in terms of design and he could, he, he on his own makes uh, a wide variety of things is a good thing. You look at uh, someone like uh, Ferrum Forge, you know, a Ferrum Forge knife when you see it, um, they do have a, a variety of style, uh, a variety of designs out there, but for sure, you know, one of their knives when you see them. And sometimes it can be too much. Sometimes it can be uh, hard to distinguish uh, between models. Um, if they look too similar. Uh, but then again, to, to super fans of any sort of designer, um, the, the the subtleties will be apparent, you know? Right. Well, and again, you know, some folks uh, collect the style of knife, like you were talking about the Warren Cliff that uh, Pinkerton had three different makers, you know, coming out with. So, you know, that's, that's a market there. Some folks will collect just Dirk Pinkerton's, you know, design knives or made knives or whatever. So, um, from the business side of it, a lot of a uh, lot of different angles to to go for there, and a lot of uh, different reasons folks collect knives, and therefore you need to make knives for those different folks and those different collecting categories. If yep. You will. And actually, uh, while we're talking about Pinkerton, he uh -huh. does have a knife that's very unusual out with Kaiser uh, and Dagnabbit. I wish I thought of it before we, uh, <laughs> uh, but it's the one. It's his reverse. It's his Picall knife. It's a it's a yeah. frame lock. Titanium frame lock, uh, thumb stud knife that that comes out and it's uh, you know like one of these, except in titanium form. And uh, now I can't remember exactly inversion. The inversion, um, definitely want to get that. And that is different. It's very different from from his usual Warncliffe kind of thing. So uh, I don't. I'm not picking on Dirk saying he's a one trick pony. I'm saying uh, companies are coming to him for a certain design right. because they've seen the success that other companies have had right. with that. So. Right. Right. Yeah. They want to get on that, that success with their own, uh, with their own company brand, own company. Exactly. Name. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, a lot of uh, ground that we've covered in uh, knife life news still to come Bob's uh, tip of the week, as well as his state collection. And now that we're caught up with knife life news, let's hear more of the knife junkie podcast. All right, Bob, state of the collection time. We're talking new old knives. What does that mean? Uh, well, my parents are here visiting from, uh, you know, from home. And oh, hey, uh, mom my and mom, what's that? Hey, mom and dad. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. They're awesome. Uh, my mom, uh, where, where they live, they live in a little community. And my mom runs this little uh, uh, sort of um, uh flea market there. I mean, you know, not flea market, uh, like garage sale kind of thing. And, you know, people, uh, it's, it's, it's a community community for older people. And, you know, when, when, um, when, when there are things left in houses, it goes, it goes to the, the sale, they sell it off that the proceeds go to the community. And, uh, so my mom runs that little, uh, that little shop and, um, she had a couple of knives. Wait, come wait, 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 just 
a minute, Bob. You're what? telling me that your mom has access to all this kind of good stuff from a state estates that are people are moving all these kind of goodies you know i'm in the resale business and this is the first time i've heard of this i thought hmm. you were my friend bob my God, oh my that God. Never, okay okay it never <laughs> occurred to me because Bye. Bye. <laughs> that's funny it never occurred to me because usually uh it's furniture uh you know it's furniture and silverware and uh uh you know no ice picks I, i've never heard of any ice picks coming through but <laughs> but that's but now that you mention it, I will find out what's what's on the roster there, and if there's there are any good uh, takes for you, I'll make sure to get them. Right, uh, sorry but, about that. But get back had, to the knives. <laughs> <laughs> they had a couple of knives come through, and my mom grabbed them and uh, you know bought them and 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 gave them to me. The first one is a little uh, pre classic Victorinox classic. I think it's a pre classic, and wouldn't you know it? I have my light up too high, but this is like a mother of pearl you know, synthetic mother of pearl, Lubrizol. And uh, interesting thing about this, you know, it's got the scissors. It's got really uh, much stouter pull on these uh, slip joint springs than the, than the current day, than the current day uh, Victorinox classics. Really snappy. So it's kind of weird because uh, I know that if things come to this estate sale, uh, the, the people have died and this stuff is just you know, hasn't been claimed by their family or whatever. And so now I'm the caretaker of wh whoever had this, uh, this thing. So the first thing I did was throw away the toothpick because, and then I took uh, some compressed air, blasted it out because A, there was dust in there and, you know, there's a fingernail tool here and I just can't, can't abide by having other people's cells in my knives. And especially when I know the story about the knife or, or loosely. So I blasted the whole thing, rubbed it down with alcohol. It's now mine and uh, I will take good care of it. And actually, you know, it's a little sentimental of me, but I know that someone carried this for a while and it meant someone, something to someone, even if it was just, uh, you know, a, a little utility thing. Um, the other knife, well, two others. Uh, the next one is this great little lockback. So this is an Imperial Frontier. Um, what is it? 4715 is the, is the model number. Frontier. It's like a million other little knives you've seen, little lockbacks. Uh, the cool thing about this is that it was used and sharpened and used and sharpened a million times until it looked like that. And, and this is what it probably started life looking like. Something similar to that. Maybe not a clip point. Wait, sorry. Maybe not a clip point. But uh, still, it was a full-bellied blade, most likely. And so this person carried and used this thing for a long time, sharpened it down to that. I love that one. And look at that. You can see a little etch in there that says Goodyear. You can just barely see the G. But uh, yeah, I, I love it too. I'm I'm really so does that. So does that mean it was a. Uh... Like a promo item for Goodyear tire and rubber? Or? Yes, yes, it was. A, it, it's oh. exactly what it was, and it's got uh, you know, unlike this, um, unlike I love this, that too. this little <laughs> one I was showing, which is uh, oh, the promo items. Yeah, this is a solid walnut. You know, it's brass. I gotta, I gotta clean this up a little bit. Um, but just used, and and the great thing, it's very stout. It doesn't have any wiggle side to side. It has a little up and down, but it's a lockback. It's an old lockback. Um, but yeah, Imperial. Imperial Frontier. You know, if I, oh. if I was in the uh, market for another knife, I, I like the looks of that one, I must admit. Plus, it's a uh, promotional advertising item, so I've always loved uh, old advertising items, old country store items. So that would uh, definitely be one that uh, I would be in the market for. You know, Jim, uh, we talked about this electrician's knife the other night. This was a promo yeah. item, yeah. or or at least an item that was bought from from this uh, Swift Electrical Supply in Nanuet, New York. Um, yeah, or a giveaway there, item from them. Yeah, there are a lot of those out there. That could be something you could uh, you could sink your teeth into. I bet and yeah. find some really interesting uh, um, cover stamps and 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 things. Yeah. Well, and I like the uh, the imperial imperial you showed up because uh, you know it kind of reminds me of the buck knives, the couple that I have. You know, I love the yes. the wood the brass kind of combination. Just the 
that to me is more of the simplistic design that I like as opposed to the James brand knife you showed off uh, a little while ago earlier I in the program. That, that knife right there, it, it l just looks classy, you know, wooden brass. Right. Classy and classic. Uh, yes. Whereas the James brand knife is is really cool design to me, but it's slick and modern. Whereas mm. this is not slick and modern. This has that yeah. old timey feel. Right. All right. So uh, another knife that mom found for you? Yeah, the last one um, is a, a chef's knife slash camp knife made by the Dexter Knife Company uh, that I'm unfamiliar with. But I think I think they must have been out of New York. Uh, I'm not sure if they're still around, uh, but this is uh, this was branded for LL Bean, you know, the outdoor outfitter. And I'm not sure how old it is, but I've always wanted a sort of Sabatier style carbon uh, bladed chef's knife. And uh, so that's exactly what this is. Uh, it's a pretty stout. You know, it's 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 not too much thicker than my um, I actually haven't measured uh, but it doesn't seem much stouter than uh, say like my Wusthof Trident, the kitchen knives, but it has a much longer handle. So it immediately makes me want to chop. So I think this would make a great camp knife. I think it would make a great all arounder. You know, you could take this out into the woods with you. And uh, I, I feel like, you know, unless you're planning on splitting all your wood with your knife, I feel like this could do you, uh, do you great out there. And plus, it gives you little little extra room uh, to to choke back to do uh, like tasks that you might consider a little bit uh, too too heavy duty for a for a, uh, a chef's knife. But in any case, I love it. I think it's really cool. <laughs> cool. You uh, yeah, you're gonna uh, be actually putting it to any use, or is that a uh, wall hanger? No, no, no. I'm gonna sharpen this. I'm gonna. I mean, it's still sharp back here but you know like most knives it dulls out towards the tip so i'm going to get it nice and sharp i'm going to uh take down i'm not going to fully uh polish it but i'll i'll clean it a bit you know just to kind of get get the other person's juju off of this knife and kind of get my own in there oil the handle up a little bit and get it in rotation uh, up in the kitchen so thank you mom okay. yeah yeah thank you mom Keep me in mind next time, too. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Especially when you get some like that first one. All right. Uh, State of the Collection continuing. A uh, lot of uh, stuff always to talk about in Bob's State of the Collection. New knives coming in, sometimes knives going out. But uh, this time is actually about using a knife, Bob. Some uh, yep. hard use of your cold steel. Yes, my Laredo Bowie, which... Dag nabbit, I uh, left it upstairs. I thought I had everything assembled and uh, I'm not going to get it. You know what a Laredo Bowie looks like. I have a patina on my blade. It looks kind of like that. It is a such a beautiful knife. But uh, uh, recently I did some investigating, you know, YouTube investigation and found out that the Tang, which I thought was a, um, a rat tail Tang, meaning a, a thin piece of metal going all the way to the back to the pommel that's threaded with a nut. I thought that's what it was, but but in reality, what it is is a, a, a short rat tail tang soldered to or welded to a piece of steel cable that goes back to a nut uh, that that is uh, that caps the pommel and 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 then that's sanded down. And <laughs> it seems like an odd bit of I'm not going to call it subterfuge, but I mean, why would you go through all that trouble? when you could just have a longer tang and thread it and, and it would seemingly be stronger and easier. Um, so that's when I went on my, my little epic uh, 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 search for a new buoy and I got two. Right, you know? right. Um, but with my folks here, we're doing a lot of, uh, you know, fire pitting and, and uh, mm -hmm. my daughters are into this concept called Huga. Huga, which is from uh, the Nordic European countries, I think maybe Denmark and, uh, it's all about getting warm and cozy outside with a fire when it's cold out. So okay. we're doing that. Um, so I figured I should chop up some wood. I like to use my trail master, uh, uh, my trail master Bowie today. I decided, or yesterday I decided I'd use the, uh, Laredo to see how it held up, see if that tang was as ins insufficient as I suspected. And I took it out and started pounding it through wood. And lo and behold, the thing is awesome. It's very stout. I, I think my, uh, at least for one use or or if 
a weekly use for for making Tinder, it will be fine. Um, I think maybe my my hysteria over the tang of the Laredo Bowie was unfounded, perhaps. Uh, so if you have a Laredo Bowie, don't worry. Don't throw it away. It's still a good right. knife. Uh, right. It's just not what I expected under the handle. Well, maybe not what you expected underneath the hood, uh, but uh, performance uh, was still good, as you yeah. said, right? Yeah. And and who among us have hasn't experienced that in in one fashion or another? Right. Right. All right. So, anything else about the state of the collection this week before we move along? I'm thinking not, Jim. I'm All right. Not. Well, I I think Mom did you well for uh, for this state of the collection this week. A uh, couple of oh, great yeah. little. Uh, little knives there. And so it's nice to have uh, uh, your um, your tentacles out in the world with other eyeballs uh, on the lookout for you for knives. So that's cool. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Uh, tip of the week. We've done that from uh, time to time. Uh, yeah. I can't remember. Was it last week or the week before you did a, a tip of the week uh, about uh, saving the box when you were uh, kind of talking about some of your uh, resale efforts and yeah. uh, another quick little tip of the week this week, Bob? Yeah. Uh, the pivots of these slip joint knives. You know, I've been really into slip joints lately. That's uh, That's been my, my recent jam, so to speak. Um, Sometimes the pivots uh, are, are less than less than satisfactory. Uh, for instance, this old uh, electrician's knife has great walk and talk to open, and great walk and talk closing to the half stop. But then here, it it, it falls off. So a thing that you can do to improve the action of your slip joint knives, and this isn't a this this won't uh, solve uh, this won't cure every problem, but it can solve a lot. Uh, is to take First of all, take a rag and fold it up. Make sure it's uh, nice and thick. So you open up the knife and, and this, okay. So this is for uh, slow close and open. This could be for grit. This could be for uh, say it's an old knife and it's really hard to open up. So open it up, drop some oil. You can use even three in one. I use gun oil or mineral oil like sharpening oil. Uh, there's also knife pivot lube and those kind of specialized uh, knife oils, but you don't need those. Just drop a, a little bit right in the well there, right in the pivot, and then maybe a little bit right there on the back side of the tang. Wrap, wrap the, uh, the blade with a uh, rag, and then just open and close it, open and close it, open and close it, open and close it. And then uh, take some compressed air, blast it in there, and then re-oil open and close it, open and close it, open and close it. And uh, it's called flushing, flushing the pivot. I'm pretty sure that's uh, what people are referring to when they use that term. Uh, but that's that's what I'm referring to. And then, and then really after you blast it with the air a second time and add a drop of oil, it, if, if it's gonna be any better, it will be better by that point. Um, and you'll get great action. And really what, what you're doing is kind of removing old grit and getting it out of there and, and blasting it with the air and then wiping it uh, helps get gets, uh, some of the little tidbits, the little tiny gritty bits out and you're not just recirculating, you know. All right. Uh, but at the same time, you're also just wearing in that pivot. It's kind of like when you get a new and stiff frame lock and you, and you hold the frame in and you open and right. close the blade to sort of get the... Uh, the detent ball to create a track. You're kind of doing the same thing with the, with the full contact mm -hmm. with the blade. Right. Kind of uh, what you talked about earlier with those uh, estate knives, kind of getting the, uh, the, the other person's funk off of it as well as uh, loosening, <laughs> yeah. loosening, loosening it up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I will, uh, I will be doing that with this knife. This is a lockback, but you do the same thing with a lockback. Yeah, well, if you wanted to clean that one up really nicely and just put it in the mail to me, I'll I'll, I'll make sure you have my address. <laughs> All right, cool. All right. Yeah, you can you can tell. I'm sorry, Jim. I think you would like this. You can tell like this has been dropped in the parking lot a hundred times. You know, you can tell from the from the little dents and this thing yeah. has just been in the pocket for years. I love it. Yeah. No, that's uh, that's that's kind of like knife I like, you know, just that, uh, that simple, simple knife like that. Yeah. All right. A uh, lot of ground we have covered. Uh, I want to uh, remind you that uh, if you're listening uh, to this podcast, when it comes out on Wednesday, 
uh, that tomorrow night is our Thursday Night Knives uh, live show on YouTube. Uh, you can uh, watch that at uh, thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube or thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. That's the Knife Junkies uh, Facebook group. You can join and uh, become a member and uh, share and also watch the show there either on Facebook or on YouTube. You can catch all the replays at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. Thursday. And Bob, the reason I mentioned Thursday Night Knives tomorrow, Thursday, October 15th, that's the third Thursday of the month. And that's going to be our Patreon knife giveaway. That's right. We'll be giving away the Topps Knives Eye Stick. It is a, um, a, a push dagger, very large, very heavy. I've been showing it off uh, for weeks now on the show, uh, but I right. do have it boxed up at this point. It's ready to send out. Ready to so, go. Ready to go. But it is... <laughs> It is a chunk. I, it's. I think it's thicker than a quarter inch, uh, you know. But it's uh -huh. a push dagger. It's got a a, a double edged blade and a huge handle. And what an what an what an awesome piece it is. And we Great. got that as a donation to the channel from our good friend uh, Stu from Stone and Steel Knives up in uh, Vermont. Right. Yeah, and thanks to uh, Stu for that. And uh, go ahead. There's still plenty of time for you to uh, become a, uh, a a member of the Knife Junkies Patreon. The $10 a month level gets you uh, into the knife drawing. And a little inside joke here, if you've been listening for a while, uh, you need to join because Caleb needs some competition because he yeah. has won two out of the three knife giveaways. So uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure he doesn't want anybody else to join. But come on, folks, you need to get yeah. in there and join us. <laughs> can give him some competition but uh yeah thanks truly for caleb and uh, to all the other patrons of the knife junkies patreon you can find that at the knife junkie.com slash patreon uh we are with you three times a week uh sunday is the interview show this coming sunday lance abernathy bob that's uh who you're having a chance to uh to chat with on the interview show yeah, we're going to talk about the 2020 reload uh that sniper blade works is seeing um Lance Abernathy, custom knife maker, head of uh, Sniper Blade Works, came out in 2009. He won an award, best uh, tactical knife design in 2013, and uh, and then and then uh, you know he kind of went away for a little while, had a had a retooling, and he's back and uh, with a, with uh, a production line, um, a limited production line that is very exciting. Has gotten a lot of great press so far from yeah. uh, big big time reviewers like Jim Skelton. Um, so very exciting. And what a cool yeah. guy. Great, great guy. Yeah. Yeah. I think you'll like that interview. Should be uh, live on uh, Sunday afternoons. You can find it on the Knife Junkie uh, website, thenifejunkie.com. Of course, uh, plug the Patreon again. Uh, patron members get uh, early access and ad free access. Uh, patron members get a uh, patron. Patreon members get early access to the interview show on Friday evenings. So a couple of days uh, early for you to, uh, to listen to that interview. Again, ad-free if you are a Patreon member. All right, Bob, we have uh, covered everything in my show notes. Anything I missed or anything else you want to add before we wrap up? No, I, but I, I also want to say thank you to everyone for listening and being a part of, uh, of the efforts of, of what Jim and I do. It's greatly appreciated. And uh, without you and your enthusiasm, um, you know, we'd have no no more reason to do this. So right. thank you so much for listening. That's all. Yeah. Well, and uh, maybe uh, bring your enthusiasm in a couple of weeks to the Thursday Night Knives. You know, Thursday, October 29th is two days before Halloween. How cool would it be if everybody dressed up in some Halloween garb mm. for Thursday Night Knives that night? So uh, think about that and uh, make your plans to join us tomorrow and every Thursday for Thursday Night Knives here on the Knife Junkies podcast and uh, media empire, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Yeah. So for the Knife Junkie, Mr. Bob DeMarco, I'm the Knife Newbie over here, Jim Person, saying thank you for joining us on episode 155 of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and you may hear 
hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.